now through the miracles of modern technology. Zany Worldwide Banner featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim in an on-topic, off-topic free-for-all. Welcome to the Gun Talk After Show. Hi, it's the After Show where we have tons of fun and we, you know, we go all over the place and you never know. Sometimes we like to talk about things that are... It's kind of scientific. Yeah, you know, like that. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Flashbacks. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so have you just kind of mulled that call over for the whole week? That's been something. <laughs> it has appeared in several places, has it not? <laughs> it, it really has. That, that was a fun, fun call. Those that don't know, if they uh, didn't listen to last week's after show, go back and listen to that one. Um, we had a caller trying to, Jim, trying to give this guy cover. Well, he could have been talking about growing like super strength hemp and all that. And I'm thinking, yeah, no, I think maybe hemp may have been the right plant material. (laughs) He was just trying to stay on topic is all it was. I'm just not sure he was growing it. Well, it could have been. But then it's consuming it. (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. It was was fun, though. Heck, it's fun. Grew grew some legs this week, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, so there you go. It's it's um, uh, we we do what we do. Uh, I do want to we'll talk just for a moment about the the Donald just because he's fun and everybody wants to talk about him. It's kind of scientific. Yeah. Well, I, I, would you be quiet? Thank you. Jeez, you can't get that guy to shut up. You know. <laughs> that was. I'm sorry. I had an ND on the uh, scientific thing. There. It was, uh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's get Brian here before he gets tires of our yammering, and then we have some places we want to go. Brian's calling in from Medford, Oregon. Hey, Brian, how are you? I listened to your show, I believe it was last week, and you were mm-hmm. talking about, oh, uh, doctors asking you questions about mental health, do you feel blue, questions like that. I have just mm-hmm. recently had a shoulder surgery, and I'm now answering questionnaires, and I see my doctor tomorrow, and lo and behold... The do I feel blue question popped up in my questionnaire. <laughs> I, yeah. I used a term called is boundary violation, but I I, okay. I got an email, a very involved email from a doctor who's a, a gun guy doctor. He said, look, he says, here's the thing. He says, I am required to ask some of these questions if I'm going to take Medicare patients. It's required. He said, now I could decide not to ask them, but then I don't get the Medicare patients and they don't have care. He said, why don't you just answer them any way you want to? He says, I don't care. So his thing is, look, if somebody says, do you own guns, and you you say no, he says, I'm good with that. And if he says, do you feel blue? You say, no, I feel great. Uh, You know, and so maybe that's just the way to go. It's just as long as you're aware of these when they say, well, do you feel blue? And if you say, well, you know, sometimes and you're thinking, well, the n- normal thing would be to say everybody feels blue sometimes go. No, you don't really don't want to go there because it opens the door for somebody to slap a label on you. And that label can be a no gun sign for you. You know, if they ask if you own guns, just lie. If the doctor is your hunting buddy, just say No. <laughs> You'll get it, you know. You'll understand. And you know, if you if they ask you if you feel blue, uh, just say no. Now, having said that, let me say this: if you are in fact having depression, it's good to get treatment for it because that's a very treatable situation. So don't ignore that. Go get some treatment. I mean, I don't want anybody to say, "Well, I didn't get treatment," you know, because of this. No, it's good to get treatment, but just be aware of what's going on behind the scenes, behind the curtain back there. But that, that's what I would do. Does that help, that Brian? sounds like the easier route anyways. <laughs> I, I think so. Rather than get confrontational, just tell them what you want them to know and nothing else. Or you could just say, I don't want to answer that. And they'll probably go, okay. And they'll just move on. And just move on. So don't worry about it. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you, sir. Uh, Michelle, have you ever run into that? Anybody you know ever run into that at a doctor's office? I have not run in it to my. I have, let me start that over. I have not easy run into. Say, yeah, easy for do me you, to say. Do you feel? Do you feel blue? I mean, <laughs> no, you're having trouble talking Tongue here. Tied, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need some scientific help. She's turning blue, though. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I have not run into that question myself, but a girlfriend of mine had that question posed mm-hmm. to her, and that's what yeah. she said. She's like, "What do you need to know that for?" 
That has nothing mm-hmm. to do with my headaches or whatever the symptoms were, you know? So she, I think she just kind of danced around the situation. But she mm-hmm. was like, really? They don't. Why do you need to know that? And so. Or you could go the, uh, you could go the other way and say, no, but I have these fits now and then. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that a problem? I'm sorry. I'm sure the question is going to come up for everyone. It is. It's it's part of the national requirements. And so unless you're going to pay cash for all your medical care, uh, if you're not going to use insurance or Medicare or any of that, then, you know, if you're going to use that stuff, they're going to ask the questions. And we just have to be ready for it. I guess, you know, really, that's really what we're talking about, isn't it? Just know that it's coming and have your answer ready so you don't get surprised by it. Oh, yeah, and by the way, tell your family members the same thing because if you're doing this and your spouse doesn't know that he or she can get hammered by this, and thusly you can too. Mm -hmm. So you need to have that conversation. It just goes back to the fact that I don't know what's in that safe. He says there's only one gun in there. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. We had the Anschutz guy on today. That was kind of fun. Um, I know that most people don't know Anschutz. If you've been around a long time, I mean, I know, Michelle, you know you know what Anschutz is. I don't know. But you don't see a lot of them, though, do you? No. Actually, Jim turned around and looked at me, and he said, you guys sell Anschutz? And I said, not new. We have used. Right. And I said, right. a couple of years ago, actually, our family has, we have three of them. And uh, my son won oh. a Rimfire Sporter match at Camp Perry with an Anschutz. So they're great, great rifles. They are terrific guns. They're not cheap, you know, but as they say, the best never is. But if you want a, basically a one-holer, you could take one of their twenty twos and at 25 yards, if you're on a rest with a good sight or a good scope and you know what you're doing, you're going to be cutting out a ragged hole yeah yeah they're awesome guns and they're beautiful talk about they are and talk about a squirrel gun oh my goodness Mm -hmm. uh they used to have a 22 magnum but i think they have dropped that now for squirrel gun do do they have a shorter Mm -hmm. stock so the squirrels can hold it right or is it a (laughs) oh to shoot squirrels never mind growing those you've been growing those leaves haven't you (laughs) yeah i'm remoting this in from fresno actually (laughs) Right. Yeah, there you go. That's yes. right. Or at least Denver. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's closer to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where I just saw they have marijuana infused uh, salmon. Now here's a, here's a thought: Could you get into trouble? One would imagine you could, if someone slipped marijuana into something you're eating. Which I gather, and I've not been out there since they passed it, but I guess in Colorado it's pretty much everywhere. Um, Kids are doing it to their teachers. Be- I heard. Yeah. Like baking cookies for the I mean, teachers and stuff. I'm I'm just thinking of the ramifications for like a, a DUI, then to a firearms owner's deal. But if you tested positive for what is it, THP or T- STP? It's or, kind of scientific. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> do they have Do they have a roadside test for that, like they do for blood alcohol? I don't know. Uh, I think what they do is they hold out a bag of uh, Cheetos. <laughs> And if you just go right for them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, do you feel you blue? Do you have the munchies? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, we're going to have a quick draw contest for Cheetos. There we go, for the munchies. Okay. Oh, my gosh. If, well, all they do is they set, they set up roadblocks at the uh, Taco Bell at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And so... It's the percentage has gone way up of arrest. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's, it's just pretty simple. You profiled me. It was the taco. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sure, though, for some of the people that have to do or have to give urine specimens, that I'm sure mm. they could lose their job. I mean, oh, if it was how, how does it, oh oh we got a mystery caller oh 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 Horshack oh <laughs> do you remember Horshack okay. remember Horshack yes. from okay. back so out. somebody's calling in we don't know who it is we're going to answer them live on the air and find out what's happening ready there we go hello hello it's George anyway I just wanted to say the caller from last week. You'll never be able to build your body armor if you keep smoking all the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's a supply and demand thing. That's right. You'll never get ahead that way, right? Yeah, it's like, what happened to all the leaves? Uh, I don't I don't know. Anyway. Dude, yeah. I, I don't know, man. One other tip, just because I just uh, finished doing this, 
if you if you're archer if you shoot archery mm-hmm. if you buy a cheap metal detector it will pay for itself in finding arrows that are buried in the ground so i just uh, i just i just found two two arrows my wa- my wife's learning how to shoot and a friend was over here shooting so i just found two arrows so i figured that's good for about 20 25 bucks so, did they uh, slide under the grass because i I've, I've had them slide under the grass and you just can't see them down there yeah, well, that's what happens. They slide under the grass, and you can't see them. And he spent probably, a friend spent probably 45 minutes looking for his arrow because it's one of those hunting, fancy, smancy, mm-hmm. expensive ones. So all it's going right. to it. pick up is the head, right? Because the shaft yeah, pick up the pick up, No, no, it's carbon, but uh, the, uh, yeah, it picks up the, the metal tip. And, uh, you know, but it's not like you guys look over like a 20-acre area. So right. it's pretty quick. Right. But, one one other thing I wanted to mention, yeah, I had I had a, a thought. Tom, you talk about using twelve gauge or using birdshot for uh, personal detection, and that's mm-hmm. adequate for in the home. And the thing I I, I bought some of those, uh, and I've forgotten who who makes them. And I, I won't quote the wrong company, but the company that makes it, where uh, like an eighth of ounce of lead stays in the um, uh, stays with the. Uh, uh, the hole, or the, or the I, now I'm having a brain freeze and forgotten what it is, and follows <laughs> uh, follows through with the mm-hmm. uh, in the little piece of plastic, so you can see where you're actually shooting. And I was thinking that would probably make a pretty good idea for personal protection round two, because you'd have the regular bird shot, but then you'd have an eighth of an ounce uh, that's in the wad. You know, is going to go right where you're aiming. So that would be. Uh, Hmm. Uh, impressive to somebody. I'm not sure I, I know what load that is you're talking about. Does that ring any bells, Michelle? It's, uh, sh- it's basically shot with some kind of a chunk of lead in it? Not at all. That's why I was looking at Jim. I, I'm not familiar with that. Is it, it must be some kind of a slug that's in with the bird shot? I'm not sure. No, it's not lead. What happens is the, the pellets, about an eighth of an ounce of the pellets are captured in, in like a rod. And just oh, they stay in the wad. They go out as as a slug. The wad, uh, the shot cup, and the shot all comes out together. Okay. I'm not familiar with that one, bro, uh, but I appreciate you letting us know. I'll keep my eyes open for it. And look, I appreciate the call. You know, um, Michelle, that does remind me that Winchester has a PDX load. Don't know if they have it for others, but in the 410, it's got several shot pellets and then several, I call them watch batteries, uh, disc in there, so it's like a combination of the two. Thanks. It's uh, kind of weird, actually. But if you were going to shoot something like the Taurus Judge or the Smith and Wesson Governor, that would be my load. If you had to use a shot shell as opposed to a forty-five cartridge, up. Well, isn't much that, isn't that kind of a cartridge. spinoff on like what Double Tap's doing with the centerfire stuff? The well, no, up? but Double Tap has two two, two projectiles. projectiles. This right. has like shot and projectiles mixed in, and it's kind of like I'm. I go all the way back. Michelle, remember the Remington duplex shotgun loads? Yes, I do. They had two different sizes of shots. Yep, they had two. That's by for four people who or, can't make yeah. up their mind. <laughs> what size yeah. do you want? Oh. Everybody thought, well, this is great because I'll have big shot for big ducks and long range and small shot. And I said, well, no, let me explain how it actually works because this way, when it's up close, you won't have as much small shot as you need, and when it's far away, you won't have as much big shot as you need to bring down a duck. So actually, I think it's worse both close and distance, <laughs> but boy, it sure sounds like a good idea for the uh, terminally uncertain. <laughs> so. I love you know, it. Of course, the, lo- the logical extension of that is we're going to give you a load with everything from number 2 to number 11 shot in it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And we're just going to mix it all in there. We're not even going to sort it out. You're after bound to hit just something. Just get everything. Yeah, yeah so- something's got to work. We're, we call that the throw it all up against the wall load. Speaking of something, has, something to, sticks. has to work, we have to uh, run our spots here or they're going to whip us and beat us. Ah, darn it. Okay, all right. Well, uh, all right, let's do this. We'll take a quick break, and uh, then we're going to come back with, you know, something. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make up something. Okay. I don't know what. Be right back. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets. 
then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups. Shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. All right, we're back with you. Uh, We've gone through the biology, we've gone through the history, now we're taking it to a different area of study. It's kind of scientific. Yes, okay. It never gets old, you know, it's just okay. I mean, I know you guys are tired of it, but I'm not, so you have to put up with it. So okay. There you go. You're the boss. <laughs> there, there you go. Well, I'm certainly glad somebody thinks so. Good grief. I get no respect around here. Yeah. Rod, this said Rodney. Oh, Rodney. Just call me Rodney. <laughs> oh, I loved Rodney. Fun stuff. Let's discuss, yes. if we can, why okay. Michelle was late to work today. That's the only valid excuse. Could, <laughs> we're filing of. this under, under slacker? Yeah, no, not this doing? time. Not this time. You know, it's very difficult on Sundays, you know, when your shooter's out in the field <laughs> and you get rained out in a match and they say, what? we're canceling the match and, oh, we'll just add it on to tomorrow's program. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. You, you were shooting yesterday? Well, there were, my husband is doing skirmishing, and so we had a match in southern Ohio that was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, but we weren't there okay. for all those days. And it got rained out yesterday evening, and because of mm-hmm. the rain, they just canceled the event. But instead of just deleting it from the program, they added it onto today's shooting program, which meant oh. an extended day. So I had to call Jim. I'm like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I would have thought they would have checked with Michelle and said, you know, is this going to be convenient for you? <laughs> they didn't do that, huh? No, hmm. it's funny. They no. cared about all the other people on the line. Right. Now, she would have said, oh, I've got a sick kid or I got in a car wreck. Unexcusable. Yeah. Unexcusable. But for shooting, right. we can let it slide. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How many people did they have doing the skirmishing there? Oh, gosh, there were quite a few. I mean, it, it's different because they shoot... All different kinds of firearms. What they were shooting yesterday was carbine and smoothbore matches and musket matches. Sometimes they have Henry matches and sometimes they have the pistol matches. So, Explain it, what that is, skirmishing, because I've never heard the term. I've heard the term, but not used in firearms. Didn't, well, it, a lot of people get it confused with reenacting. It's not reenacting. Skirmishing is basically, it's north-south. It's North-South Skirmish Association. And they form up into teams that or different statewide. And so Ohio has several teams and it's based off of civil war time. And it is a timed team event and an individual meddling event. And it's Mm. awesome to watch as a spectator because it's instant gratification. It's shooting clay targets. It's shooting tiles. It's wood planks. So as a spectator, you can see them shooting what they hit, what they miss. Is it a stationary thing? Are they running and moving? Stationary. Okay. Yep. Stationary. So they go forth. Are are a lot of them using black powder? Yes. So they use black powder. So you get all that cool smoke out there when they're shooting? Absolutely. And so you've got people screaming, you know, hit on bottom left or wherever it is. If it didn't break completely, only a piece chipped off of it, it still counts Uh, as a break. And so it's pretty awesome to go and watch. Yeah. So it's it's fun. And that's what we got tangled up in. Yeah. That was a good weather. (laughs) (laughs) And I had to think back to the poor guy in Alaska when he was talking about, you know, how do I keep my muzzle loader (laughs) dry? How do I get my powder? How do I keep the gun performing? And that's exactly what I said yesterday was, oh, boy, boys, we need to keep the powders dry. (laughs) Keep your powder dry. There it is. That's a good saying, and it really means something. It does mean something, yes. So, yeah, that's what we were. That's what we were gambling with the weather. <laughs> so, what kind, what kind of uh, guns are your husband shooting? They are true to period time. So, Mississippi um, carbines and muskets and and smoothbores. 
So all originals. Oh, really? Not reproductions? Well, some people have reproductions, but the majority yeah, but of them re- out there are originals. Yeah. So they're really That's awesome. Neat. Yeah. Awesome to to see. And as I said, kind of in a sick way, the amount of people that failed or died or wh- whatever during battle, it's like we have all these guns that are originals. It's like, who was the person that went through and picked up all Somebody of these firearms? went through firearms? and picked them all up. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, they're well, still yeah, out there. Th- think about that. Something like uh, Gettysburg and Pickett's Charge, where you have right. 17,000 people killed in a battle. Right. And you go, oh, my gosh, you know. So, right. Just all, all that comes with that. And, yeah, people always say, well, yeah, our modern guns are just so deadly. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> they were pretty deadly back then, too. They were. Oh, you know, no, people are more dead now <laughs> in a fatal shooting right. than, than right. ever right. before. Because, yeah. yeah, you know, you're deader than dead with what we have now. <laughs> but, you know, it is... Over dead. <laughs> over dead. But it's pretty interesting. I mean, there's so much history that these people have. You know, every mm-hmm. every team has their own history that they follow too so when they go out to different engagements at fairs or different types of events that they're invited to you know it's an awful lot of history that's shared right along with that and because it's instant gratification as i say it's just a hoot to now, watch is there costuming and stuff like there is with mm-hmm. the, the reenacting stuff yep they're all uniformed how neat yeah it's awesome it really is cool have you ever have you ever thought about doing it they want me to do it, but I have this problem on Sundays with a job. <laughs> Somehow I knew you were going to work your way right around to that. No, but they have asked me. They've wanted for years for me to to get involved with it as well. And We're, that that's, you know, I mean, I have a commitment, so... <laughs> Do you, do you have a, do you have a costume you could wear? I would because have to be purchase. Okay. G- I would have to purchase. Jim would uniform. let you wear that to work. It would be okay. <laughs> I might borrow it. Some nice wool pants <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and suspenders. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Or see Jim doing this whole whole thing in a, a wool you know union uniform. The whole deal, you know. So oh, I'm in. <laughs> Take pictures, man. That that that's it. Oh, oh man. <laughs> On days where there's not a whole lot of wind, like yesterday, it was quite windy, breezy with the different fronts and stuff coming through. And if it's not lightning, they're shooting unless it starts pouring so badly that the targets fall apart because some of them are on cardboard backers. Mm -hmm. And that's what was happening yesterday is the backers just wouldn't take it. So today you have a day, it was nice and clear out there and the smoke is just hanging. So you have to shoot through all of that hanging mm-hmm. black powder smoke. So, like it was. It, yeah, it, it's it's really cool. It is cool. Very photogenic. It's. Uh, I need to get up there with the video crew. crew. That would be fun to oh. do a whole yeah. thing on That'd that. Neat, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really uh, awesome. I want to ask you guys just your thoughts. I'm trying to resist the temptation and the pull to get too sucked into the 17 plus people in the Republican primary because it's just circus at this point. But the fact that Trump came out with a Second Amendment position paper, says something. Somebody's advising him and said, you need to get this out there. And they did a pretty decent job. Yeah, I I think they usually tiptoe around that, and both parties, really. They tiptoe around Mm -hmm. it until it's almost like a a last straw sometimes, right before they'll start trying to air out their gun views or anti-gun views, which is more like it. And I think he he pulled it early. It's just good. I think it's going to weed out a bunch of folks. Well, that's what I was going to say. It kind of forces the hand of everybody else to say, what is your position to specifically firearms and to the mm-hmm. Second Amendment? And honestly, I know he gets a lot of hype, but he is bringing a lot of conversation that the common man is discussing at home or in their groups yes. of people. And, mm-hmm. you know, if nothing else, I know the media can't control him, which is part of the problem. <laughs> and that's part of the fun, too. Right. Exactly. Right. But, <laughs> you know, entertainment value. Right. he doesn't owe anybody. You know, he's not out there lobbying with anybody else's money. It's his money. He's out there running with his money. And he can he can speak what he, whatever he well, wants to in that manner. You know, you know, it's really driving the media crazy is that a lot of the things he says that they think are way out there and outrageous and all are exactly what a lot of people in the country are thinking. It's just that the media, because of where they live and who they talk to and who they are around, never, ever hear anybody talking like that. So they think he's all by himself, when in fact he knows that actually that's how a lot of people are thinking. Right, and and I also think there's a certain amount of, there's going to be a certain amount of spite vote 
that because of the media coverage of him saying that you know the, all these things he does and this and that and that's not how the mm. common man feels there's going to be people that wouldn't have voted for him or wouldn't have voted at all that may say mm. well screw you media i'm i'm going to vote for this guy i think you may have touched on something he may be appealing to people who may not have voted at all mm-hmm. right and like i say it is common talk he's not fancy with his words yeah I mean, he's cutting to the chase he's not dancing all around the situation without wanting to talk about it specifically so you know the media does dictate where the debate questions go they say that they get mm-hmm. some from people you know sending in questions as well and i've watched a couple of them where they've actually taken some questions with computer or whatever but you right. know they dictate what we hear and what sure sound they're. bites sure are, are put out there so if that's the way that you want to base your presidential election off of then shame on you i'm sorry but shame on you for not doing enough edu- <laughs> educating of of your own thoughts and your opinions to yeah jim's shaking his head at me but because well, yeah. he agrees completely but you know i mean really you need more information than the sound bites and what the media gives because there's so much more to a person and this may be hidden until next what july august right. september right. just before the elections mm-hmm. and like oh yeah by the way how do you stand on this much of the general media is very insular they only talk to people who are like them they you know live in places where people are like them and so they think that the whole country or or at least in their view everybody who is a thinking person is like them. And if you don't agree with them, then you must be some kind of backwards, uh, redneck, hillbilly, inconsequential, and easy to marginalize. Yep. And they do. Yep. So sure. it's, it, it's, it's going to be fun. But I think you're right, Michelle. You, you guys made a good point. Him coming out and taking a stand, basically taking a, putting a stake in the ground on his Second Amendment policy, is going to pull other candidates over to that where they're now going to be scrambling to say, me too, me too. I believe that too. I support national concealed carry. I, or if they don't, or not. Yeah, at yeah. least on the Republican side, they're going to look bad to a lot of voters. And they've been told by their handlers, their advisors, don't touch this because you know the gun guys are going to be with you no matter what because they have nowhere else to go. That's been the Republicans all along is, well, what are they going to do? Go to the Democrats? But now they're looking at it and going, wait a minute. They do have somewhere else to go. They'll go to Trump instead of us. Going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. One other quick thing I wanted to chat with you about is small guns, small pistols to carry. Uh, I've been playing with the Glock 42. The Mm. 43 is a little bit bigger. Um, We have Shield. We have the... XDS, they have the Ruger LC9. And LC9 In your LC9. store, Michelle, yeah, what are you seeing? That seems like the real hot area, just kind of that size gun for carry. You're completely correct in that statement. I mean, it's all of those smaller firearms that people are looking for. Something not quite as small as the hand, just a little bit bigger. And those Glocks that they've come out with, the 42 and the 43, oh my goodness, they, mm-hmm. you know, they've really taken over by storm. Um, the XDM, even though it's a little bit bigger, that Mod 2 XDM, that seems to be right. a popular one. It's a little bit heavier than the others, but for some people, they need that little bit of weight to be controlled with recoil. Um, but yeah, that's really the hot spot. It is that small, cargo pocket type of firearm that people are looking for. And, you know, I I think it's fabulous that we have so many choices that are out there. They are the same, but very different in how they feel and how, you know, recoil comes back with people. So I think you really need to spend your time when you're looking at the small guns, especially to find the one that works the best for your situation. Mm-hmm. And, and then don't hesitate. I mean, once you find it, go. <laughs> now, who would have thunk 20 years ago, Tom, we'd be having a conversation about miniature nines and 380s. 380, you're kidding. 45 or nothing. Right. Right. And, and now if, no, almost everybody right. I know has got a 380 and a nine. Well, and let alone have you have that conversation with a female involved in your circle here. I mean, truly, mm-hmm. you know, it has changed that much. It has just done a complete opposite of when... I first started selling firearms in a store versus where we are now. So it's awesome. I think it's great for the public to have 
the choices that they do, the colors, if you want colors. I mean, I have my own mm-hmm. personal feelings on some of that stuff, but it's neither here nor there. It, what do you want? So what are your personal feelings? Do you like the color guns? Do you like the, the bright colors? Do you just like a standard black and silver? Yeah, no, I'm... I, I like the classics. I like the stainless guns or, or give me an all blued gun. Mostly the the biggest reason I don't like the color is because if I'm looking for a gun that's small like that, I don't want it to be flashy. I don't that's want right you now. to know mm-hmm. that I have it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The blacker, it's, it's the better It's not a showpiece. No, it's not. It's a working tool. It's, and, you know, and there's a temp- temptation to say, hey, look at my cool gun. Well, that's always a mistake. One always. One extra it's a security chance. gun. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if I have, you know, the black pistol grip and, and a black holster and, you know, a blued firearm with that, I'm going to be able to blend that into my outfit's a whole lot mm-hmm. better than you're going to be able to put in your purple or your pinks or, you, mm-hmm. you know, the rainbow colors. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have them if that's what you want. Fine. And lots of people have them and don't carry them concealed. That's fine, too. Right. Now, think about how many how many women, particularly, and this is going to sound sexist, but only because it is. How many women <laughs> do you think have bought a gun because it was pink or purple? Like, oh, that's beautiful. I wasn't in the market for a gun. And I couldn't Prob- really decide. Probably a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why not? Right. And we have people come in. It's like, oh, do they have that in pink? You know? And, and so that question's huh. there all the time. People do want to customize well, it to them. And for people who don't know, no matter what the gun is, yes, you can get it in pink because you have Cerakote. Cerakote you can yeah, yeah. Actually, you can change the color. Uh, you can do it. You can send it to somebody or you can actually do it at home. They have a spray on and they have a bake on option for Cerakote. So you can put different kind of colors on your guns. Now, how uh, is it a one time shot? Or could you Cerakote yeah. your gun every week? And I want a blue gun this week. Oh, my gosh. I mean, seriously. Is it something you can do more than once, or it's a one-time shot? Well, to the, specifically to your question is, are you talking about spraying? Because Cerakote is essentially a paint. Right. So if you were to keep building it up, I could see an issue with operation. With tolerances and stuff, yeah, it would go out. The, the other thing I don't know is how would you, how would you take it off? I do not know the answer to this question. I, you know what we're going to have to do? That means we're going to have to get somebody from Cerakote on here to talk about this stuff because we don't know, and so we will bring the answer people on. That'll be fun. See that? It's mm-hmm. an opportunity. There you go. There you go. I, I like the whole idea. Well, I am um, of two minds on the whole single stack, little bitty gun, and the double. I love, love, love my XDS and my uh, shield. I haven't carried the... So the Ruger LC9S very much, but it's kind of the same kind of a deal. But at the same time, and I know it probably doesn't make any sense, I do like the idea of double stack. I've just, I like the idea of having 14 rounds in my gun instead of seven or eight rounds in my gun, plus the extra mech. I, you just need to get bigger hands. You don't need another gun. Just get some bigger hands. I think what I'm going to do is figure out a way to bring back the bustle. See, and then you could like wear all your guns and everything underneath it, and it'll be stylish. And you know, you'll have guys wearing like big thing. I don't know, I don't know wh- how you conceal big stuff. I-, I will say this though, I-, I have to go all the way back to one of our first callers today. In fact, I think it was the first caller. Wasn't it fun to hear a guy who had all these guns who finally got his first 1911? Yeah, and get his reaction to that, the Magnum Research guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, man, man, that just really, it feels good. It just fits right in my hand. And going, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's why there are so many of these guns sold. And virtually they unchanged in over great. 100 years for the most part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, they really are. I mean, we have better sights on them and they come with good triggers for the most part uh, and some additional you know, things. But you can customize it any way you want. You can take all the parts off the frame and stick whatever you want on there. Kind of so. like an AR in that aspect. It is. Oh, AR, politicians. Wouldn't you like to see some of these politicians going out to the range and shooting ARs? At each other. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that out loud, did I? No. no I didn't say that out loud. Yeah, I know. I mean, we all thought it. It's okay. Uh, but no, of course, the problem is a lot of them do that as their photo Just op. Photo like they op. used to. Yep. They used to do the hunting thing. Was it Bill Clinton did a hunting deal, went out like in a duck blind, then came back with ducks? And it turned out he hadn't actually shot him. Somebody else shot him, but he came back and claimed that he did. <laughs> I hadn't heard that. That's great. I like the Obama yeah, shotgun well, thing. No recoil in the photoshopped 
uh, yeah, that's right. The Photoshop blast. shotgun for Obama. Yeah, I said, <laughs> yeah, please. I mean, come on, Mister Gun Banner himself. Now, one thing I will say about him: he has never hidden the fact that he wants to ban a lot of guns. It's true. And so, at, at least he's pretty straight up on. I mean, oh, we, found, Chris, we found a topic that he's actually honest on. That. We, you know, he'll say, "Well, I don't want to take anybody's guns away." But then he says, "But I do want to ban the sale of these guns." Which, of course, the tra- follow to that is, "Well, if you can't buy them, pro- do, should we actually let people own them?" Other than that, it's he's a backdoor ban. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's backdoor ban. So there you go. Okay. All right, guys. I think uh, I have to go water my plants. Uh, That's way too scientific for me. <laughs> <It's building>. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, scientific uh, leaves. <laughs> we're, we're going to build scientific leaves. Yeah. It's kind of scientific. Yes, thank of you. It is. Yes. That's it. So we're going to do that because I'm thinking I might need body armor next week. And so I have to put some Miracle Girl on these things and get them out there. And you know, I'm going to look like the Jolly Green Giant with my leaf clothing on. So it'll be kind of cool. That's right. so it's organic, man. It's, it's all organic. That's right. And it's gluten free. So, Dude. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll do it again next week, guys. It's fun. And in the meantime, be careful, be safe, and uh, you guys look out for each other. Be good. Take care, Tom. Tell your friends about the Gun Talk After Show, a more informal setting featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim commenting on topics that are important to you. Available on iTunes and other podcatchers and the Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android.